Hey guys, thanks for checking out the World of Barbecue. My name is Jeff with Tallboy Barbecue, and this week on Tips and Tricks, I'm gonna show you guys how to fire up a gravity smoker. Well, I guess it's not a big surprise that I'm cooking on another Big D's smoker. But, this is our Big D's Gravity Fed. And we are cooking for a party this weekend, so um, it's about time for me to start thinking about firing it up and I told you guys that I would show you how to do it. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Um, quick little rundown of a gravity cooker. There is a spot right there for heat to come in. I don't know what you would call that, a chute maybe? I don't know. I mean, this, this is called a chute. This is considered a chute. So you have a chute that goes all the way down there. That's the bottom of the chute. That's the top of the chute, okay? We're going to put charcoal in here, fill the chute all the way up. There's a grate right here that's going to hold the charcoal. All right, let me get that out of the way. You can see that there is some expanded metal up there and an area for heat to go into the cooking chamber. So heat's going to rise from, it's, it's basically like a charcoal chimney is really how this works. Down at the bottom here, we're going to have charcoal smoldering and hot and the heat has nowhere to go but into the cooking chamber and out of the exhaust at the top of the cooker. So let's get that on there. So the first thing we do, of course I already cleaned it up and stuff. Um, I guess you want to clean it up first. Second thing we're going to do is put some charcoal in here. I'm going to fill this all the way up to the top because we're doing three Packer Cup briskets and two pork butts and six racks of ribs. So we're, we're going to do all that stuff right here on this smoker. Um, got some tin foil here. It's just a literally a square tin foil. Um, I haven't replaced it yet. Maybe eventually I will. Whatever. But that is to save my gasket and stuff. So you can see there's been already been a couple burns uh, before I can put it on there. But not a big deal. I mean, stuff's gonna last forever. But that kind of just gives you a little peace of mind that things are gonna stay clean. So let's get some charcoal in this bad boy. Royal. So one thing to keep in mind, at least I do, is I pay attention to what's going in the chute as far as charcoal um, size because some gravity fed cookers can what they call bridge. Um, if any of you have had a um, water softener, you know your salt in there will bridge. Um, this will do the same thing. So what happens is for you folks that um, haven't ever experienced that, in this case anyways, a big piece of charcoal or several pieces or whatever can build up and bind up in the chute. And what happens then is all the other charcoal underneath that will burn down, but your other charcoal that's up here still just stays there. So you actually have a hollow spot in your chute. Oh, it's a bee actually have a hollow uh, spot in your chute and your fire can go out, so that sucks. But this one in particular um, has a, a chute instead of going straight down. It, one side goes straight down, the other side actually kind of comes out a little bit. That way it doesn't do that, so that's really cool. It's actually narrower at the top than it is at the bottom, so um, that prevents bridging. But just a heads up since we are on the uh, subject of gravity fed cookers that can be an issue keep that in mind let's fire this thing up yeah we are looking in the bottom of the chute and the actual firebox 
of the gravity fed cooker. Um, this is a technique that I have developed, I guess. I mean, you know, I'm not taking credit for it, but this is just something that um, I started doing because it worked for me. So I guess when I say I developed it, um, I don't mean I invented it, but this is just something that I have come across that works for me um, by trial and error. Those are two chunks of cherry wood, which I would be using during the cook um, when I have when this is up and running and we're full capacity whatever we got meat in and we're we're actually cooking i'll set a piece of wood right here as close to the door as i can and um it seems to smolder well right there and not burn too fast all that good stuff um that's how i do it in my smoker so and it works well so these are the chunks that i use and Obviously you see I have one stacked on another and then I have two paraffin wax cubes on um, the top of it and it gets those cubes tall enough to where it'll reach the flames of them will reach the charcoal above them in the chute and that starts the fire. So ooh, let's get this going here. Usually one will light the other but whatever. So right now I have the top of the chute um, wide open, like you see me uh, with the tin foil putting uh, charcoal in the top of it. And because, obviously those are rocking and rolling there, um, because of that it'll just be like a charcoal chimney like I've been saying this whole time. And um, it'll start burning up because heat rises, etc. So um, you'll have that fire start to smolder up works really good but that's how I start mine and uh, usually I leave everything wide open for about 20 minutes so I'll leave this wide open and I'll leave the top of my chute wide open for 20 minutes and usually that gets everything hot enough to where I can start shutting things down I put my uh, electronic controller on there, my flame boss, and it takes right off for me and I'm up to 250 degrees within a half an hour or so. Um, so I give myself an hour plus, maybe an hour and a half, something like that. I don't need all that time, uh, but I do give myself an hour uh, or more if I can to start up my smoker. So um, anyways, I got a bunch of work to do with this catering job. so. Um, I'm gonna leave this video at this. this is, I mean, this is just about it. So I'm gonna get that charcoal going, as you can see, and um, it'll be about another 20 minutes, something like that, and I'll start shutting everything down. I will take those two logs out of there, and until I have meat in there, um, I won't put wood in, like I was showing you before, I won't put wood in here until I have meat in it. So I'll put my meat in there, and right after I do that, I come over here, I open up this firebox door, I set a log right here, and then uh, shut it up, and we're, we're cooking. We're at full, full ride there. So um, that's it. That's how you start a gravity-fed cooker. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying our videos. It's summertime now, so between catering jobs and um, my actual 9-to-5 job ramps up during the summertime, so I'm doing 10-hour days, and on top of catering and competitions and then doing videos for you guys <laughs> uh, life gets pretty hectic and I mean as some of you know that follow the channel we have a baby on the way etc so things are just ramping up which is cool we like it busy so um, I'm trying to put out as many videos as I can is what I'm getting at um, it doesn't always end up working out that way but um, I'm trying to do as many as I can for you so I'll keep doing these how-to videos. I'll keep doing competition videos. Um, actually, this weekend we go to Wayland, Michigan. And uh, uh, I think I'm going to do a compilation video of a couple contests in one video. So uh, you guys will get to see all that too. So um, please subscribe if you like what we have going on here. Um, of course, plenty of content to come. Um, as fall approaches, stuff like that, I'll be doing more videos. Uh, I'll be doing more patio stuff, recipes. We'll be doing more interviews. 
I want to do some trailer tours of other people's uh, barbecue trailers and stuff. So uh, be looking for all that stuff. Uh, we appreciate you watching. Um, and I will see you guys Sunday.